Hi everyone and welcome back to Privacy Kitchen and, and a very warm welcome back to Tom. Thanks for joining us, Tom, on his second part on DPOs. Yeah, cheers, Rob. Thanks for having me back. Excellent. It was a really good first uh, conversation, which is up on the Privacy Kitchen website. Um, so for those who don't know and who haven't watched the first one, Tom is the founder and CEO of Apex Privacy and also the Data Privacy Podcast, which is fantastic. Highly recommended that you go and see it. We've got links off Keepable as well and off the blogs on this one. So um, this is the second, as I mentioned. So the first one we looked at uh, conflict, which is the big hot topic on DPOs and how DPOs in practice can work with their organizations. And so we're actually looking at a very related one now, but we're going to leave aside the conflict bit as much as possible. And we're looking at how can a DPO become the strategic player in a business, a strategic business partner. So just to set the scene, I just wanted to um, mention two different aspects on this. One was from the CIPD, so the Chartered Institute of Personnel Development. Um, they say business partnering in the HR sense, but this is applicable uh, throughout. So it's not about what they do, it's about how they do it. So the business partners work closely with the leadership teams to build organizational people capabilities, working with the organization to shape and implement the strategies and programs, drawing on their unique knowledge as professionals in their domain. And this is uh, also reflected in the American Management Association. They've got four key aspects to being a strategic partner. And Everything's about strategic partner in, in compliance and legal and, and different areas. And so these four areas, they said, one is understanding your domain really, really well, both at the strategic and the tactical level. The second one, understanding organization development concepts. So leadership development, team development, strategy development, um, understanding the business of the organization, its market, its competitors, how it works. And obviously that's really key for someone um, on, in data protection as well. And then operating in partnership, that bit they have as the fourth bit. And it's really around the relationships, the empathy, um, going beyond task level, uh, getting into sort of personal level relationships and 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 building that out with respect and collaboration in, in the organization. So with that with that intro, uh, Tom, uh, over to you in terms of how do those strike you for the opportunity for a DPO to move from a box ticking, which is often a criticism, obviously DPO is way more than that, but how can it move away from that perception and be seen more as that strategic business partner? Yeah, so I think there's great value in looking at other like typical business partners from a HR point of view, from a legal point of view, from even marketing and any sort of business that works within a business and wants to become that partner. So there's great insights and maybe more established insights that can be taken from that. So any DPOs yeah. on the line or consultants, they should really like expand their field of vision and really look at how other people are putting their value proposition out there and what lessons have been learned. And I think HR is a great example because HR traditionally would be seen as not a cost center, but very close to it because yeah. it's there to deliver yeah. certain functions, there to deliver like legal obligations. So how do you get involved there and deliver more? From a DPO point of view, I guess to go beyond and let's not let's not backstep into conflict <laughs> yes. um, exactly how much we've, doing we've creates a conflict. Horse. Yeah, um, so I think let's just take it that you're of the view that the DPO is there to do more, to check the boxes and to meet the minimum mandatory yeah. requirements in the regulations. And I think to be able, really able to deliver as a DPO, both internal and externally, you really have to understand the business and what drives the business. And I know it's a loaded word, but culture comes into things and culture yeah. really defines how you're going to be able to operate. So in the early days of my consultancy, like a new business, there was no such thing as a bad client. It was just, there was a new yeah. client at the end of the day and it was just, there was money in the accounts and that kind of kept me going. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Whereas yeah for sure. Now, three years on I can afford to kind of stand back a little bit and see okay have an introduction call get to know the business ideally do an assessment of some type um, to understand okay who are these guys what are their objectives in engaging with a DPO yeah. where are they going so I think to really be a partner and a strategic business partner you have to start on that level of understanding the client, 
understanding their objectives and understanding any sort of any conflicts <laughs> wrong word <laughs> not conflicts <laughs> but uh, just say for example i'm coming and you're we're coming from western europe we've got a certain set of principles and how we operate and we how we operate business and the likes of that and i guess i use the the example of like privacy is one right data protection it's a set of rights how we appreciate that is different to other people either from the same countries that have different priorities okay business leaders people in different markets and the likes of that they're going to approach it from a much different point of view just like someone over here might have certain like thoughts around the right to life versus just say the states where you're in a state that still have the death penalty and without getting too political there's going to be massive kind of differences on how you Mm. would have a conversation and how you approach that particular topic and obviously that's a very loaded topic so we won't get into that but it does yeah. influence how how do you talk and how do you engage with clients who have different perceptions of what we're trying yeah. to do when we protect data protect privacy absolutely i mean i've always worked in organizations with a because the, the, they were growth SaaS companies there was always a dev team in san francisco or california and and you know very very different well before ccpa so it's a very very different approach to to privacy and data protection um and the the cultural difference of talking through it and then having having uh customers across the globe you very rapidly i think start looking just for scalability and and, and operability you start looking for that uh common denominator and so you look at those principles from the um convention 108 that are in that were in the 95 directive and they're in every law coming out since really and you look at them and say well that's really respecting the customer so how if, if we take those principles across the program and then look at cultural sensitivities across and also the business needs and this is we're not we don't want to talk about conflict but this is an interesting one where um we were having a chat just before this where if you're not the dpo so if you're the privacy champion if the business has decided they don't need a dpo and they're not going to voluntarily have one You've got a much freer reign to get involved in as a strategic business partner in lots of different areas. Um, I think if you're if you're constrained, let's say that by the conflict part on the DPO, and you're looking at that, uh, even if you sort of flex it, there's still an awful lot of ground you can go over for to to really make yourself into that strategic business partner. And I think that cultural bit, as an in-house counsel, and I'd love to hear about your experiences in-house compliance as well in terms of in-house counsel. It's you know. You don't want to be there in your own little ivory tower silo somewhere. You've got to you've got to be out there. And actually, the models come through with a very distributed legal uh, department where people are embedded into different departments and they get good relationships with their business unit, and so they can future scope and all this sort of thing. It does that does that? I think that's something that comes from having a maturity in the role in house legal, in house security, in house compliance, in house data protection, and actually being having that sort of confidence in in the role in yourself as well, to be able to go out there, like you were saying at the beginning of the business, you're sort of going, I'll take, you know, great, great, great. Here's the answer, here's the answer. And then afterwards you can take a little bit step back. Do I want this person as a customer? Is it the right culture? And and you're sort of, you're less hurried because you're more confident in where you're coming from. Um, and how, how does any of that sound in terms of your experience um, working, putting across these programs uh, across businesses? Mm -hmm. So I was lucky enough to have like some great mentors in the compliance space when I started off my career actually over in London and this was just after the financial crisis when we went from light touch regulation to a lot more uh, heavier regulation I guess and prior to that I guess legal and compliance within corporate was seen as like the anti-business unit. Yes. You know, it was the unit that yeah. was there to put a block on ideas. It was there to tell you no, to really kind of, it was seen as something to stifle innovation. And that, yeah. I think that's like, that's an old perception. And it's something that like I've built my career around that you're not there to just like, yes, no, it's black and white. It, like the more involved you can be, especially from a compliance point of view, where we usually acted as the translators, between the business and between legal, we were yeah. there kind of on the ground. And right. that's how I've kind of built up 
my DPO offering and how I'd recommend other DPOs approach how to kind of embed themselves because we're in a really unique position as a DPO. We get a view of businesses that most other professionals don't get. Like yes. even at the outset yes. of a at the outset of a DPO engagement can be quite intimidating for like a business owner, especially if you're working with maybe smaller startups where you've got like the founding team and you're pulling yeah. everything out of them like how do you get clients? How do you market yourself? How do you bill? How do you manage yeah. hits? Or like this is really it's not, yeah. it's not a test, but it you're asking them every little piece of their business because there's more yeah, than likely yeah. personal data in every little piece. And if you've got a, a one person like or if you've got a founding team, they can kind of feel on the spot. Obviously, when you're working with corporates and larger larger organizations, it's more separated. But as the DPO, you've got a really unique position in, able, in being able to talk to all the different departments. Yeah. And what's really interesting is that data mapping exercise that we usually conduct at the outset of any sort of engagement is really like looking under the hood of a business and getting to know yeah. all the different actors. And from a strategy point of view, we've really found that business owners love the outputs of these data flow exercises because yeah. it has been a data protection thing, but now it's nearly like a process optimization and yeah. like it's a really, it's a program and it's a set of procedures that has way more benefit than just identifying the flows of data because you're identifying if there's problem areas, if there's yeah. like duplication of efforts, if there's data maybe that's not being used to its fullest potential, so you get to optimize yes, absolutely. it. Um, so like that's one of like, it's a great thing to present to a C-suite or to a business saying, there's a lot more value in this exercise than just data protection. And I think really to become a partner and like really embed yourself within a business, you're trying to add value where you can, where you can, and by just checking boxes or just looking at it from your own priorities, saying, yeah. okay, this exercise has been conducted because we need it to achieve X, Y, and Z. But if you can kind of step back, see the company, see what you can deliver yeah. to the company and look at the benefits, then that's when you're really going to see the full potential of the role and get the appreciation probably that you deserve. Absolutely, because that view over the business, it's such a rare thing. It's very easy for people um, within whichever operational part they're in to get sucked into doing that operational part and sort of not really, and lose, you know, you have a sort of, you get, when you join, you build your context and then you might lose that as the business develops over time. So doing that data inventory gives them a real snapshot of this is actually how we're doing it. Like you say, I mean, I often hear from IT as one, domain where they say it gdpr has been fantastic because you know it's meant that we can deal with these three or four projects i've been dying to deal with for years and never got the budget gdpr has given us the the clout and the the, the motivation to actually get those done um and I, I there was an interesting chat on linkedin just now about how do you convince people of the value and one of the things um in that conversation in the comments was the cisco uh, data privacy benchmarks have been really good for showing ROI. So last year it was slightly higher than this year. So this year it's still, there's a good ROI. Last year it was like 3.5 in the UK, 2.7 globally. I think this year it's it's two uh, globally instead of 2.5, but it's still, that's still very good. But it lists out all these different benefits that you get from it. And I think that's right. You're having, having that view over the whole business is a fantastic gift to the, to the business that the DPO can bring and can work on. But also then those, I think, elucidating all those other returns from investing on that and sorting this out gets then the buy-in to move forward. Mm -hmm. And I suppose like on a personal level, if you're working with management and obviously when you're working in a business where there's lots of different sectors or lots of different areas that you need to, to converse with and maybe they have their own priorities and there's different, I guess, obligations being placed on them by yeah. data privacy laws. You should really, you have to be able to sit back and kind of make them look good in their role and propose yes. solutions. And I give the example of just at a HR manager, you could have really innovative ways on how to raise awareness beyond the annual quiz and how to train staff. 
but that has to be handed off to the person in charge. But the real value, they'll see value in having Tom as the DPO yeah. because he helps me deliver and I get good I get good feedback because of that. And ultimately, I'm doing my job as the DPO because and I'm making it easier for myself, less conflicted because I'm handing yeah. off yes, a absolutely. piece. But I'm giving them the firepower and I'm giving them the ammunition to actually execute it on their side. Yeah. Obviously, we could do a whole different episode on marketing and how yes. we're going yes. to approach marketing going forward um, with the different like regulations and different, I guess, standards being imposed by the likes of Google, the likes of Apple and the likes of that. Yeah. So yeah. being involved there from the DPO point of view, you don't have to have the answers, but you need to give the environment that people in that space know how to work. And I think you mentioned how the dev teams love the GDPR. Well, I wouldn't say love, I'd say that's a bit of a strong word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how it kind of gives some certainty. And I always approach this conversation that the regulation isn't there to stifle creativity or to stifle innovation. It's just giving you a set of boundaries. It's giving you rules to the game. So yeah. football fans, we know the rules, we know offside, we know these things. So who has the best strategy to play within the rules. So as a business, yeah. you want to be facilitating these conversations. You want to have strategy workshops where you're saying, okay, this is what we can't do. This is what we can do. Now you're the professionals. How do we get there? So as opposed to just knocking back efforts or saying, yeah. this is what you have to do and stepping back. I think being a conversation starter and my on my own podcast, we talk a lot about the DPO being a communicator and the DPO, yeah. ever, heavens forbid, as a salesman, because the DPO has to be there delivering this message and getting buy-in across the board. So you have to deal with different personality yeah, types, different avatars. You've got like your chief marketing officer is going to look a lot different to your chief legal officer versus your C-suite maybe. And there's yeah. going to be a lot of different personalities that you maybe have to take to the side and talk to them in their language. So now you have to talk marketing language, you need to talk about avatars, you need to talk about ROI with certain departments and then other yeah. departments want to hear about directives, regulations, like, you know, there's just, um, you I really have hit, to become conversational across the board. I think you've hit on something, about, so, so that AMA bit at the beginning of the um, American Management Association, but they said about the partnership, it was about that empathy, about those relationships. And what you've just done there is brilliantly given a fantastic set of examples and thoughts on that in terms of if in that your HR one, if you go and help that HR person deliver some really good data protection training and, and put it in context for their team, um, you've empowered them, you've made them look good. You've also um, taken away a lot of the feeling of maybe fear around GDPR so that it's made them feel more confident about it um, and by helping other people have wins they're going to come back and help you as well and that's all part of that relationship part of being seen to be seen to be supportive I think that's fantastic and then also the um, yeah I don't know if we could say they love love GDPR but certainly the the uh, one of the things that the Cisco studies comes out with is um, the different returns on investment include the customer wins. And what I found in my practice before was when the dev team see that we did a win from a big partner or a big customer because of our um, compliant procedures, that actually that, that won us that big deal and helped us step up, then suddenly you see the motivation change in that team as well. And they go, okay, you know, there, there is a, there's that, there's that commercial real value to that on building that through too. So I think that all, all really helps. In terms of helping those different departments, we talked about sort of training in terms of um, part of the DPO's role is, is, is training and awareness. Um, how else would you see the DPO working with other departments, say for example, in building out the inventory in the first place, the fundamental keystone of any data protection compliance program, building out your data inventory. That's one surely where the DPO has a lot of these opportunities. Yeah, because that's usually your first conversation with these yeah. heads of departments and the likes of that. So the DPO, we have to give them the framework there and maybe we have brilliant tools like Keepable that are there to, to really make this process easier. But again, yeah. without the insights of this is why we're doing this, 
So like yeah. giving the how is fine, but you'll only get so far. Like give, yeah. like giving the why and giving them a yeah. bigger picture of okay, we're gonna look at this in quite granular detail. How your business or how your area or your department deals with data and really giving them the knowledge to deliver the message to their staff. So again, you're yes. usually working or the way I structure the kind of engagement is that we'll deliver it to the leadership team or whoever's involved in that initial project. So you'll have your head of marketing, you'll have your head of HR and the likes of that, yep. and maybe champions positioned below them. But as we're briefing them, we're briefing the department head and their champion to deliver that message to their team in their yep. own speak, in a way that they're familiar with, right. and really driving the here's the how, but here's the why, and I guess the overall benefit. So you need to be able to stand back and see the bigger picture and communicate that bigger picture that they don't just see it as, oh, this is a pain now, we have to go through this thing when I could be out marketing to people or I could be yeah, out absolutely, doing my, absolutely. my other role. Because again, if a person's been in the role for quite a long time, and now all of a sudden data protection, data privacy is a bigger chunk of their role. We've just taken hours out of their day. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Which yeah. is probably already very busy. So yeah. without the why and without the overall big picture of the benefits, you're going to yeah. lose interest and you're going to not be a partner and be more of just a, a hindrance to them. I think that's a benefit here because we've got so many benefits use the word benefit again it's, it's very good for dpos here and for, for people in our in our industry because there are so many benefits to privacy you can say to marketing these are the benefits for you you can say to um development these are the benefits for you and to sales and to hr etc so i think that's a that's a really a really superb thing that it, that everybody involved in privacy is there for i think what it's, i mentioned privacy and you've got the data privacy podcast we talk about data protection i think also this is quite an interesting one um our industry is incredibly supportive like the chat on linkedin there's loads of different whatsapp groups there's loads you know there's there's obviously there's a level of competition because people are competing but there's so much work to go around but i think it's more than that people are really um it's a very open supportive industry in privacy and i think that data protection officers come with that sort of stamped in them so they get the, you know everyone's always helping each other and i think that helps in terms of the personality of the person that comes in and they can sort of pay that back into the business. Um, do you, how do you find that in terms of um, having the DPO isn't just an island in the business, they've also got this sort of support network? I suppose it's a great value add for an external DPO to be able to say, we have a larger network, you know, we've, we yeah. know what's happening. Obviously you're under your duty of confidentiality and everything. Yes that you need to keep like within the business stays there, but you're getting insights and you're getting conversations and input from your knowledge of the area as a whole. And I think even as a, an external DPO coming in to help a DPO within a business, sometimes the DPO just needs a support network themselves yeah, because yeah. within a large organization, they may be looking to you for all the answers or looking to you as like a scapegoat to put out there to say, okay, we've just dropped off in our acquisition because of his decision to remove some sort of channel. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, so there's great benefit in yeah, yeah. Or getting the information delivered from an external expert that the company yeah. kind of buys in that, okay, this, is be, this decision has been made. Like there isn't a stigma within the actual business. But also, yeah. as you said, like the community is super. I think we're all feeling the same pains. You know, yes. no one has an answer to Shrems. People are still dealing with conflict. You know, there's a yeah. there's a lot of unknowns there that we have to kind of we have to talk to clients and make them understand that we are in a kind of transition phase and a evolution phase of this and having the backup of people that is say, like when you've just had a bad day, I think I put yeah. up a post pretty recently and I was like, uh, Jesus, clients and their problems. It's all me, me, me. <laughs> you know, just kind of very tongue, tongue, tongue in cheek. And like, I got great support back from it. I was like, yeah, some days you just need to go and do this or that, or that. like all stress relief type stuff. But um, yeah. yeah, I think the DPO 
community in general is very good and very supportive and happy to give an opinion and the great well great and complicated and exciting thing about it is you can pose like a hypothetical question and 10 experts that are really well regarded will have 10 different answers yeah, yeah, and you, yeah, can yeah. Have to, you have to make the best sense of that yeah. for your client for the situation and yeah it's just it's a it's a very cool area to be in and yeah. it's a very good uh, like a very good group of people so far that i've come across obviously you get a few a few bad apples but we won't we won't name them on it go on name them name them <laughs> no <laughs> so, so i think um that's a, actually from that as well not only does it give you the confidence in your advice that it's the right advice or or rather you know what others are doing everyone always says so what's everyone else doing so you go look this is what we need to do this is what the compliance says this is what the new regulation is or this is what we need to move to and almost always i always used to hear so what's everyone else doing and i think having that network enables you to sort of go well this is what people are doing or there is this high level of uncertainty around this bit or there's no real uncertainty around this bit and so i think that's a that's a fantastic bit so we're just coming into the last couple of minutes so if I could impose on you, if you could just sort of summarize for us what we've just sort of what you think about the the DPO as a strategic partner, the opportunity that's there for them and, and those key bits that we've touched on, if you could just summarize those. Yeah, so I suppose the DPO really has a unique position to play in the business in terms that it's going to connect a lot of the dots. It's going to connect up mm -hmm. departments. It's going to connect data flows and really give you a holistic view of the business and being that person you get to talk to the marketing manager you get to talk to the finance manager you get to bring these people together in ways that are outside annual board reviews or annual yes, yes. kind of events so you get to talk to them offline you get to talk to them like well we used to be able to talk in public but yeah definitely the dpo gets to be a facilitator and really gets a really thorough view of the business but when they have that view, you should be able to see efficiencies and you should be able to drive, yeah. I guess, initiatives outside your, what would be like your mandatory tasks and the likes of that. You should yeah. be able to see where, oh, marketing, we've seen that process. You could be able to talk to someone else. Um, yes. So like becoming that facilitator within the business, because there isn't many professions or people within the business that will have that remit to talk to so many departments within yeah. this a, a short space of time um, yeah. and then once you're embedded and you're working with all these departments you really want to kind of stand back as much as possible and let them deliver the program yeah. with yeah. an element Great. of ownership to it that they need to be able to put it in their own speak they need to be able to deliver yeah. their own benefits you can't say this is the benefits of our program full stop you know yeah. You give them like yeah. some guidance docs or you give them some information on a call that can let them position, have their own value position for, for their team and for the people that report into them. So as much as you can, you want to be able to get a client that's a good fit that aligns yeah. with how you see things happening. You want to really understand the business and take that data inventory and mapping and use it more to understand the business at large as opposed to just a set of requirements yeah and from there do like do i guess you just have to understand and trying to upskill and understand what marketing want to deliver and understand what the priorities for different stakeholders that you have because again if you don't work your priorities in with them if just say marketing are coming or yeah. sales are yeah. coming to the end of the quarter and you've put a big onerous deadline on them from a data privacy point of view it's not going to work and you're going to be in conflict yeah. from the start there. So really engaging with people on a, on a very, I guess, friendly basis, but as a good coworker and then sit back and let them take credit for your great ideas or just giving them nudges in the right direction um, in terms of how to achieve what you want them to achieve. So you're nearly in God mode. You're like, okay, getting people, <laughs> people to move around the business as you see fit, but you have to, I guess, overall, be able to stand back look at your business and i think from my own personal point of view at the start i was everything to everybody before i really said no this is my niche i'm working with tech companies i'm working with SaaS companies i'm working with b2b SaaS, and that really helps you 
be able to you build up that expertise within that area to be able to deliver those value adds in different areas that maybe aren't as obvious um, at the outset. Yeah. So then yeah, I'm not sure if they did a good job at summarising. No, totally. <laughs> Totally, we have, but you absolutely hit on everything there. I think it's a, it's a fantastic, it was a fantastic summary. So, Tom, thank you so much again. I will put the contact details up as well. It's on the end slide, but obviously Apex Privacy, a data privacy podcast. Um, everybody uh, should go and have a look, and there's links on the Keepable blog and the Privacy Kitchen um, YouTube channel as well. So, thank you very much, Tom. As ever, fantastic conversation. Cheers, Rob. Thanks for having me back. Take care. <laughs>